One of the forgotten reasons of why we are called to love one another as Jesus loved us is because God is in you, both to do and to will of his good pleasure, but God is in you. That's what we call Emmanuel, God with us, God in us. So if God has placed his spirit inside you, then you have, as it were, God in you. If you are in Christ or you are in Jesus, then you have, as it were, God in you. And because God is in you, your outer markings of what you are, the personality, the physical visage that I can see and that we all deal with, doesn't have a lot to do with the very fact that God is in you. So when you choose to confront, when you choose to attack, when you choose to tear down someone that has God in them, then if you can receive this, you're going against God. Because God wants you to understand something about himself that he loves. God is love. Until you put that recognition within your mindset and your heart, then you really don't understand completely who God is. You think that God is a God of the Old Testament. You think that God is a God of wrath or God of judgment. You don't understand that God is love. And that love can manifest itself in judgment by applying mercy, by manifesting grace, by even causing judgment to come upon a person and to be separated and segregated aside into a lake of fire for that place of corruption to exist so that incorruption would be manifested in all of us because God is love. So because God is love, we are not allowed to go at each other, to challenge each other, to confront each other in ways that God has not said. For if you do, then you're choosing to deny the fact that God is in someone, that God is working through someone, that God is touching someone, that God is saving someone. So what are you doing? Jesus said, by this shall you they by this shall the world know that you are my disciples indeed and that you have love for one another. Now, love doesn't conquer all, but God does. God is love, so God conquers all. But the point being is that to not understand how God operates is to have little comprehension of when God operates and to have no knowledge of where God will operate and choose to manifest himself in a person. Jesus said it this way. He said that, you know, when you entertain angels unaware, he says, when you entertain strangers in your midst, that you may be entertaining angels unaware, that God could conceal himself in the revelation of his messengers being sent to us through angels in a stranger. A stranger could come up to you today and say, uh, you got a quarter? And what would you do? A stranger could come knocking at your door and you'd say, sorry, Go away. No soliciting. What will we do when we find strangers unaware in our midst? We are called, and we have been told in the scriptures, to know God. And this is the will of God in Christ Jesus, that they should know Jesus and know he who sent him. We should know the Father in such an intimate way that we would recognize him, irregardless of how he chooses to manifest himself. If he decides to speak to me from you, then I should be able to recognize his voice through you. If Jesus decides to use you to minister to me, then I should recognize the love that Jesus has for me in the actions you're doing to me. But if you choose to manifest the judgment of God or the righteous zeal you have by portraying something other than what God has said to do, then I think that you're not revealing really who God is. You're not personifying or being an example of God in you. Because you see, that's what we are called to be. We are called to be God-like. Do you realize what God-like means? It means Christian. Because the word Christian is Christ likeness. There is a likeness of Christ in this person. So this person actually looks like Jesus. This person acts like 
Jesus. This person talks like Jesus, walks like Jesus, loves like Jesus, has compassion like Jesus, does not bend a smoking flax or, you know, is able to be so tender that they are Christian, Christ-like, like Jesus, which if we're like Jesus, that means we're God-like, which means that God is love. So if you really want to know what God's will is, it's to learn how to love. The bottom line, knowing God, is going to be, by the way, how much you, how much or how well you know God is going to be made manifest by the very fact of how much or how well you love one another. How much you love the brethren. How much you love the world. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, and who is ever believed in him should not perish but everlasting life. But you can't say that fast. People often wonder, well, how come one day you talk slow, another day you talk fast? Did you have a power drink? No. Did you have a Pepsi? No. Now I'll tell you this. When I spend time with my Father, when I enjoy my God, when I have been forgiven and filled with His Spirit, when I can see Jesus in you and me, I am thrilled with excitement. I am joyful in exultation. I am celebrant in all of my life. That I just want to declare to everyone and to say to anyone, please seek the Lord while you may be found. Know God in a more intimate and personal way than you've ever understood before because what you'll find is that God is love. It's what we've always wanted to know. It's what we all want to feel. It's what we all need to experience. God. Because we always thought that it was just love, that kind of, you know, outside external feel-good, you know, experience that we have sometimes with a loved one, by our children, our dog, our pet, our cat, our wife, our coffee, our Starbucks, our Harley. But that's not what God is. See, God is love. He said, oh, wow, all of my being is filled to overflowing with love. And when you know God that way, when you experience God in such a way that God fills you to overflowing, then all you do is reveal God to everyone around you. And this is how we are manifesting that we are his disciples in that we love, not that we condemn. Know the Lord as perfectly as possible. The throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him, and they shall see his face. If God is the supreme good, then our highest blessedness on earth must lie in knowing him as perfectly as possible. The ultimate end to which redemption leads is the immediate sight of the ever-blessed Godhead. In our God, for it is written, Thou canst not see my face, for there shall no man see and live. But when the work of Christ has been completed in us, his people, however, it will be possible, even natural, for redeemed men to behold their Redeemer. This is stated plainly by the Apostle John, for we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. 1 John 3, 2. This rapturous experience has been called the beatific vision and will be the culmination of all possible human blessedness. It will bring the glorified saint into a state of perpetual bliss, which to taste for even one moment will banish forever from his mind every moment of grief or suffering here below. I suppose the vast majority of us must wait for the great day of the Lord coming to realize before we experience the full wonder of the vision of the God Most High. But in the meantime, we are, I believe, missing a great measure of radiant glory that is ours by the blood covenant that Jesus has purchased for us and available to us in this present world if we would but believe, press on, get to know, experience, and walk with God Almighty in our day today as He speaks to us, as we seek to know Him, as we are doing His will, which is to know Him. This is the will of God in Christ Jesus, that you would know he whom God has sent and know him, the Father. And if you are seeking to do anything else without a proper knowledge and an overflowing fullness of joy and love and peace, then stop what you're doing and seek God. 
Seek the Lord. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. So don't do your ministry if you're not full of God first. Don't do your job if you're not full of the presence of knowledge of God himself in you. Don't go out and begin to blast other Christians because you're blasting God himself. Don't challenge those things that God is doing in a person when it is God doing the work. You are called to know God so that when you know God in that intimate way that you are full of love, then you will see God at work in all of his creation and in all of the people that he's working in. You will have eyes to see, ears to hear, and a heart to know what is the will of God in Christ Jesus for all these people. And you'll see them not as rejected, dejected, distracted, confused, abused, or lost, or forsaken, or even misguided, or anti-Christs, or see any flesh as though they were the enemy. But rather, you'll see them as the opportunity of God being at work in them. Because we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, spiritual wickedness, and high places. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood. Remember that. A, we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. There is not one person, evil or not, that you think of, that you can think of, that you can imagine that you can create in your own mind that you wrestle against. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, period. It is not about the president. It is not about the government. It is not about the terrorists. It is not about all these other circumstantial things that you think, oh my God, because in this physical world, it's so important that we do these things. We got to save them. We got to, you know, rescue democracy. We got to stand up for freedoms. We got to stand up for our right to be wrong about our might, because our might comes from the Lord and doesn't come from our own strength. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but we do the will of God. And what is the will of God? Always and ever, and it will always be the same. To know God, that is the will of God. Because as you know him, you will share him by the love you have in him. It will flow out of you to everyone around you. Get to know God. God. That is the will of him who sent you, who loved you, who gave his life for you. Know God. And not only will you know peace, but you'll know love.